everyone. I'm Teresa Lieb, VP of Nature and Europe at Trellis Group, and I'm really excited to be joined today by André Martin Bouchard. André Martin leads WSB's Global Earth and Environmental Consulting Practice, and he's also responsible for its internal sustainability initiatives. Um, welcome, André Martin. Thank you very much, Teresa. Pleasure to be here. So you've been an environmental consultant for your whole career, almost 30 years, and been working with um, WSB for almost 20 years. That's pretty impressive. I'm curious what has kept you motivated and energized during this whole time. Is there a special place in nature um, that's personally meaningful to you and that you keep going back to, or has it been more the diversity and the growth of the work itself? Well, thanks for having me, Teresa. And uh, as an environmental engineer uh, working within WSP, it's, it's been a privilege to actually have the opportunity to work on so many projects with so many clients, having a direct impact on the world. I come from uh, the Saguenay uh, area, which is a French-Canadian part of uh, Canada. Uh, I grew up on, alongside the, the Saguenay Fjord River, and I'm a big outdoor enthusiast. I like I like playing outside in the mountains. and uh, Having selected the environmental engineering as a profession really connects with my values. So I've been able to help clients throughout my career. I've been able to uh, join WSP uh, back in 20, uh, 2006, and uh, we had big ambitions, big ambitions for our engineering practice, but big ambitions as well for our earth and environment consulting franchise and uh, all the way up to being the leading one in the world. So. Uh, cannot be uh, any more proud of the work that we have accomplished so far and looking forward for keeping helping clients in the biodiversity, soil, water, air, uh, carbon emission challenges that they may have. Has there been a special project or most impactful initiative that you've been involved with when it comes to especially protecting and restoring biodiversity that you can share to give people a bit of a better sense of um, what the work looks like? We have supported a number of mining clients across the world, actually, with their closure planning, but also their closure actual work, uh, making sure that the, the, these very disturbed uh, you know, pieces of land are actually going back to nature once the actual mine site sees activities. You know, we all know that mining is temporary. And we all know that it has a big impact on you know, the, the mine footprint itself. And we are extremely proud to work for mining clients to actually bring those sites back to nature. Um, there are also a number of sites across the world that have been disturbed historically. Uh, Giant Mine in Canada is a great example. Giant Mine in Canada was an abandoned mine site, a uh, legacy site from uh, 50 to 100 years ago. And the federal government took over in order to bring it back to its natural state. So uh, those are long-term projects with high impact, both from a biodiversity standpoint, but also from an hazardous waste management perspective, from a water quality perspective, and never forget also the importance of local communities. Um, you know, the giant mine project that I've referred to, uh, local communities, First Nations, uh, are very much involved with the project, not only from a workforce perspective, but also we are training that community to be able to, uh, you know, contribute to the project and also have, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a contribution in the long run, post closure, once the actual vegetation biodiversity cleanup work is done. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing in the people perspective because I think, without thinking about the human impact, um, this work can't be um, successful in the long term. So you've been doing uh, this like more local site project specific biodiversity work for a long time. And over the past couple of years uh, with uh, the global biodiversity framework being passed in Montreal um, in a couple of years ago and the global conversation kind of changing on nature, there are more and more companies who are interested in also setting nature targets at the corporate level and really looking at um, their footprint holistically for the whole company. Do you, are you involved in that work and do you feel like that's going in the right direction? 
um, or how how would you like the nature movement to evolve over the coming years? Yeah, that's that's very well said, uh, Theresa. I think that there is uh, there has been and there is an awakening from the corporate world right now on how important nature is and how how much uh, biodiversity and nature is contributing to our economies and how much our companies are all tied together uh, with nature. So, so there's an awakening, maybe since COP15 in Montreal or, 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 or maybe before, but, but right now I think that there's a movement that has started since then. I think we have, a, we have historically been pretty good at dealing with biodiversity issues at the asset level. But now I think the questions are much more fundamental. Like what are our relationships and dependencies with nature? Like what are the risks and opportunities related to nature? You know, organizations are now looking at it as uh, potential for risk and also potential for opportunities. So, um, so I think that there is a corporate awakening. Uh, the financial world is also awakening on the risk that uh, nature uh, can pause as well as the opportunity never forget about that but but i think now people realize the dependencies uh, with nature and um, i would say since montreal what we are seeing is more and more clients are zooming out of the asset specific items of biodiversity in order to get a permit or in order to get you know a mine closure uh, project to uh, being undertaken but looking at it more holistically from a portfolio perspective, from a global footprint perspective. And that's that's much more challenging, but at the same time, that's where we can actually have a bigger impact uh, with our clients. And many clients don't really uh, understand exactly how to tackle the challenge and you know what's the best way to tackle the challenge. And uh, we have seen recently the TNFD framework being released, uh, the Task Force on Nature-Related Financial Disclosure. Um, and we cer certainly support that, that framework uh, within WSP because we think it's a good way to get started uh, with biodiversity-related risk opportunities and dependencies. And uh, in that sense, we have recently launched a, a guidebook. Actually, WSP has launched a guidebook together with the United Nations Global Compact Network in Canada uh, to actually uh, try to simplify a little bit what TNFD means and how companies can actually start uh, the process with TNFD step by step. Awesome. I imagine that will be a really helpful resource for a lot of people earlier on in their journeys right now. So. To end on a little bit of a spicier, more controversial note, I'm curious um, whether you're more optimistic about our ability to solve the biodiversity crisis versus the climate crisis, or do you think the two are so closely connected that you can't really do one without the other? They are definitely closely connected, and uh, we uh, we cannot do one without the other. That's That's, for me, it's obvious. But the good thing about biodiversity is that I think if we if we provide nature the proper conditions, if we are thoughtful about how we deal with our footprint, our impact as human, we can actually reverse, we can actually alt and reverse the loss of biodiversity uh, quite, I would say, more rapidly than uh, what we have to deal with from a climate perspective. Climate change is here, it's with us. We are in a world that's going to be between 1.5 and 2 degree, uh, you know, warmer than pre-industrial uh, world. And it's going to be there. Uh, if we do the right things, it's going to be th that situation for the next 300 years. Biodiversity, within a generation or two, we can actually have a significant positive impact. Like we have seen in WSP, we have done projects where we, you have pieces huge pieces of land that were massively disturbed. And with intentional design, knowledge, and science, we brought back biodiversity. We brought back life on these sites within 10 years, five years. Um, whether it's freshwater habitats, whether it's terrestrial habitats, whether it's uh, coastlines, uh, we've done it in Florida with uh, uh, restoring wetlands. So. I think I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic in the sense that within a generation or two, 
we can actually have a significant positive impact on biodiversity if we're intentional about it. I appreciate that you are and have been intentional about it. So thanks so much for joining us today and for sharing all of your expertise and insights with our audience. Thank you very much, Teresa. It was a pleasure.